H&R Transport and every professional driver, safety is the number one concern. A commercial vehicle with its tremendous power and weight can be a dangerous piece of equipment. To ensure you arrive at your destination safely, it's important to make sure the truck you are driving is mechanically sound from front to back. As a driver of a commercial vehicle, provincial and federal law places on your shoulders the responsibility of performing pre- and post-trip inspections, as well as maintaining the vehicle's operating condition throughout your trip. As the name suggests, a pre-trip begins before a trip begins and must also happen when there is a significant break, such as taking your overnight break or sleep or berth rest time during your trip. To make this procedure easier, it's helpful to inspect your vehicle the same way each time. By developing a routine, it makes it so you are less likely to overlook something by doing it the same way each time and it speeds up the inspection process. The inspection list may seem long, but an experienced driver can easily run through the list in 15 to 20 minutes. Here's our H&R pre-trip inspection. The vehicle overview begins as you walk towards the vehicle. You will note the general condition, whether it's leaning to the left, leaning to the right. Is there a pool of fluids on the ground underneath the vehicle? Is the vehicle clear of any obstructions? If the vehicle was driven by somebody else, be sure to check the inspection report for any notes by the previous driver or defects or repairs that are needed. Is there any previous defects noted? Ensure it was fixed before you drive. Before you start checking the engine compartment, make sure the brakes are applied. Unscrew the bolts holding the moose guard bumper before releasing the hood latches. Once the hood is open, check all your fluid levels, including the engine oil power steering, and washer fluids. Check all your hoses and lines for loose connections or worn parts. As well, check the belts for cracks and excessive wear along the tensioner. While the hood is open, other parts to be inspected include the front axle, the suspension system, and the U-bolts. Also check the inner tire area, brake adjustment lines, and the brake chamber for any defects. Finally, check the steering mechanism by rapidly rotating the steering column to make sure no parts are loose and there's nothing interfering with the steering. After this part of the inspection, you can close the hood and secure it properly and move forward to the next step. Ensure the brakes are applied and the transmission is in neutral before you start the engine. All dash gauges should come on and begin to increase to the appropriate levels. While sitting in the driver's seat, with the engine running, listen for any strange or weird noises coming from under the hood. All your gauges should be up to an appropriate level. Check that your voltmeter gauge, oil pressure gauge, and water temperature gauge have increased to a normal operating standard. Your air pressure must build from 50 to 90 psi in under 3 minutes. The low air warning device will stop as the system builds to 100 to 120 psi before moving the vehicle. Check all the controls to make sure they are working and set up correctly. Inspect the windshield for any cracks and your mirrors for any damage and the correct visibility and cleanliness. Check to make sure the horn, heater fan and wipers are working as well. Upon exiting, check to make sure you have the proper emergency safety items such as the fire extinguisher that is properly charged and rated along with the three reflective triangles as required. We start the walk around inspection in a counterclockwise rotation. This method will put you facing traffic for safety reasons. During this step, the driver moves around the exterior of the vehicle and inspecting items as they go. As suggested, this inspection starts with lights. Make sure that the tractor brakes are applied and shut the truck engine off. Turn on the low beam headlights and the four-way flashers. Move to the front of the vehicle and check the license plate is valid. And make sure that both low beam headlights are working as well as the front flashers. Take a moment to turn on your high beam lights and check the front lights again. Check the clearance lights along the forward facing lights. Ensure all lights are clean and working properly. Starting at the left front side tire, check the tire tread and the air pressure. Check the valve stem for any leaks. Check the wheel fasteners for any loose or cracked or missing studs. Check the hub oil if applicable and verify that there is no leaks. Moving on, 
check the fuel tank to make sure it is secure and that the fuel cap is attached and no leaks. At the back of the cab, visually check the air lines, electrical lines, and the connection between the tractor and trailer. There should be no visible wear and tear from the rubbing and no audible air leaks. Inspect the deck, frame rails, shock towers, and cross members for any cracks or damages. Inspect all air lines that run the length of the frame rails for wear. Take the time to inspect all air lines that run the length of the frame rails for leaks. Check to make sure the registration and insurance are in the document holder. Also check to make sure that the tractor and trailer documentation and safeties are current and not expired. Once this is completed, move to the coupling system and check that it is securely fastened to the frame and no parts are missing and it is well lubricated. Visually check to make sure that the release handle on the fifth wheel has been seated properly and the locking jaw is secure to the trailer kingpin. Visually inspect that there is no space between the fifth wheel plate and the trailer. Check that there are no bent, broken, or damaged cross members on the trailer in the area of the fifth wheel. Proceed next to the rear left axles of the tractor and inspect the tires, wheel fasteners, hub oil if applicable. Because they are dual tires, please check to make sure the tires have the same wear and the same tread patterns and that they all match. Make sure there's nothing obstructing or stuck between the two tires. As you're moving down the left side of the vehicle, continue to check all your lights for cleanliness and working order and any visual damages to the equipment. At the rear portion of the trailer, make sure the airlines and the electrical cord are securely fashioned to the undercarriage and there are no cracks or badly worn marks on airlines or electrical cords. Check all your airlines for points of contact with each other or frame for wear. Check your tractor mud guards and to ensure that they are not touching the ground and making contact with the tires. You will need to check the license plate on the trailer and make sure it's securely fastened as well as the license plate light works. At this time, check all your lights at the rear of the trailer. If you can, check to make sure the cargo is properly secured. To complete the first walk around inspection, continue up the right side of the tractor trailer unit and inspect the same things you did on the left side. A second walk around is required where the driver at this time leaves the trailer handbrake valve applied leaves the cab to now inspect the possible air leaks on the blue line between the tractor and trailer, also check that there are brake lights on both units, and check the slack adjusters have not exceeded their adjustment limits. During this step of pre-trip inspection, you will be inspecting the air brake system. You will be running short tests on the parking brake, air brakes, and driver warning systems. Begin with the air brake test. Ensure the engine is off, brakes are released, and the air reservoirs are at their maximum air pressure. Take note of the air pressure reading on the gauges. Once the air reservoirs have settled and stopped moving, observe the gauges for two minutes to ensure it holds air pressure. Air loss rate over a two-minute period should not exceed 4 psi from either reservoir. Now apply the service brake. The service brake is the foot valve and apply it as hard as you can. Listen for any air leaks. This brake application should be held for a minimum of two minutes. Excluding the immediate air loss for the application purpose, the air loss rate should not exceed 6 psi over a two minute period. Turn the key to the on position and begin pumping the foot valve. When the air pressure drops below a minimum of 60 psi, the low air warning device, which is a light or a buzzer, must come on. Continue to pump the foot valve until the air pressure drops and the red trailer dash mounted valve pops out and applies the trailer spring brakes. Now continue pumping the foot valve until the yellow dash mounted spring brake valve pops out and the tractor brakes apply. This test is to simulate your emergency brake system which will work in the event of total air loss. With the transmission in neutral, start the engine. If the air compressor is working properly, the air pressure should build to a maximum air pressure in a very short period of time. To adjust the automatic slack adjusters, it is recommended that the driver perform a full brake application using the foot valve. 
First ensure the air reservoirs are at their maximum air pressure and both the yellow and red dash mounted spring brake valves are released. Apply the foot valve as hard as you can. Hold that application for 5 seconds. Release the foot valve for 5 seconds. Repeat this process 3 times. To achieve the best results, leave the tractor running. This will ensure the maximum air pressure is delivered to the brake chambers when the foot valve is applied. If anything is identified as a violation during that pre-trip inspection, ensure the items are repaired before heading out on the road. While on a trip, you will need to stop every three to four hours not only to stretch your legs, but it's a great time to do a quick walk-around inspection of your tractor-trailer unit. This will ensure that everything is in good working order. Don't forget your post-trip inspection. This must be performed when you take your required sleeper berth time or off-duty time or any time dropping a trailer at the H&R yard or at a customer location. Dropping a trailer with defects and not reporting it creates problems for the next driver and the customer. So be courteous and respect the next driver hooking onto that equipment. A final note, I just want to thank you for going through our video, taking some time to understand your pre-trip inspection. By any means, always contact the safety office. We are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week for your questions and we can certainly provide the answers you require. Thank you again for listening and have a great drive.